Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you're welcome to click the like button, the down button if you don't like what I'm talking about. Um, please hold off nasty comments, please, otherwise I'm going to have to shut my comments off. Um, but you're welcome to integrate with my subscribers in a respectful way. From returning subscribers, and especially those subscribers who have my back, thank you very much. I welcome all your support and your feedback when you feel as though comments aren't correct or respectful. Anyway, I wanted to talk today about something that a lot of us may know about, but there'll still be some who do not know that by having a British, um, a British birth certificate, doesn't mean that you're a British citizen, it's no proof of identity, and it's no proof of citizenship. Um, I thought I would share this with you because some people believed that when they came to the country and they had their babies born in this country, all they needed to do was get the birth certificate and their child was a British citizen. That is not the case. Um, a birth certificate is not conclusive proof of identity and you will, in most cases, need to request additional evidence to establish identity and British nationality. Under Section 38 of the Immigration Act 1971, the onus is on the claimant to produce evidence of a British citizenship claim and, if such information is not provided, the assumption is that they are a foreign national. So if you, even though you've got the birth certificate, if you can't have ev other evidence that they ask for, the assumption will be that your child is a foreign national, even though it's born in the country. An individual is a British citizen, either by descent or otherwise than by descent. British citizens by descent cannot pass on their citizenship to children abroad, except in a few circumstances. In a, in a government document called Identifying British Citizens 2013, it states British citizens are exempt from deportation, <coughs> which led me to ask the question, how did they manage to deport <coughs> those people? who were British citizens. But I guess there's always a disclaimer somewhere. A, British, a person will qualify as a British citizen if they meet one of the following criteria. Anyone born in the UK before the 1st of January 1983 will automatically be a British citizen. You, don't, you just need the birth certificate, you don't need any extra evidence. Born in the UK after that date, whose mother was a British citizen or settled in the UK at the time of the subject's birth, irrespective of her marital status. So, if you're a child born and your mother is a British citizen, that child will also be a British citizen after 1983. Born, the child could be born in the UK after this date and with at least one parent who is either British or settled in the UK, provided the parents were married at the time or have subsequently married. So, in a nutshell, a child born in the UK after 1983, as long as the two parents are married and are British, that child would automatically be a British citizen. Illegitimate children whose fathers are British do not automatically qualify for British citizenship. The father has to register them. Other forms of British nationality have existed in the past, but they are not recognised now because laws have changed. For example, British citizenship of the United Kingdom and colonies, in brackets CUKC, and British Dependent Territories Citizenship. So they used to have British nationality, they don't anymore. Since the 1st of July 2006, both parents are able to pass on their British citizenship to their children, even if they are not married. So I guess there'll be a lot of proof required there, you know, DNA and all that kind of stuff. 
but um, yeah, since the 1st of July 2006, both parents are able to pass their British citizenship to their children. And that's assuming they are both British, of course. For children born before the 1st of July 2006, being a parent means the mother, if the child was born on or after the 1st of January 1983, Note, women were not able to pass on citizenship to their children before 1983. A father could pass on citizenship, but only if he was married to the mother. So, if the child was born before the 1st of July 2006, his parent or her parent would be a mother if the child was born on and after the 1st of January 1983. For a child born before the 1st of July 2006, being a parent means a mother if the child was born on or after the 1st of July 1983. Oh, I see. So if the child is born in 2006, the mother, The mother would only apply if the child was born on or after January 1983. Wow, it's so complex. For children born on or after the 1st of July 2006, being a parent meant the mother, that is the woman who gives birth to the child, or the father, if he is married to the mother at the time of the birth. He is treated as the father under Section 28 of the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Act 1990, or if neither of the above apply, he can satisfy certain requirements to prove paternity. That is, he is named as the father on a birth certificate issued within one year of the child's birth, or he can satisfy the Home Secretary that he is the father of the child by means of DNA test results, court orders or other relevant evidence. There must be satisfactory evidence of paternity. The following types of evidence as proof of paternity will be accepted. A birth certificate issued within one year of the child's birth naming the child's father. Any other evidence such as DNA tests, reports to court, or to court orders relevant to paternity. If the child was born abroad and the relationship has been accepted for UK immigration purposes or the father states he is the father and we have confirmation from the mother providing there is no evidence to suggest that their evidence is false. A child born in the UK before 2nd of October 2000 to a European Economic Area national parent will be a British citizen if the parent was exercising a treaty right at the time of the birth. That key date is the 2nd of October 2000. After, two, after the 2nd of October 2000, the parent would need to be settled at the time of birth, either through the grant of indefinite leave to remain or having attained permanent residence by having exercised treaty rights for a continuous period of at least five years. I hope that makes sense to you, EE -E -E Nationals. It, I'm hoping that by reading it out, you can listen to it and make sense of it somehow, because sometimes when I come across this information, I know it's important, I know it's useful, but sometimes I don't 100% understand it myself. But there may be people out there for, the, for whom this is relevant, important, and they do actually understand what it means. The Home Office will investigate before awarding citizenship. They'll investigate the nationality, either the subjects or their parents, previous applications with a claim to British citizenship, copies of past or current British citizenship applications, copies of your parents' British passports, British certificates, either the subjects or their parents, any information relating to their parents' leave status before the subject was born, indefinite leave to remain, ILR and so on. So, when you're applying for British citizenship, it's not only you they're looking at, they're looking at your parents, and they're also looking at the parents' status at the time you were born to see whether or not they were legally in the country. 
So it's not just a question of you applying for British citizenship and you can get it. There's a lot of investigation going on. Um, a person born in the UK before the 1st of January 1983 must produce the following. A full birth certificate, any current or expired passports, and evidence of any change in name since their birth was registered to include the following. Marriage certificate, adoption certificate showing parents' details and nationality at the time of their birth, Evidence of this can be the parents' birth certificate, passport and home office certificate or registration of naturalisation. If a child is adopted in the UK, they are issued with a fresh birth certificate, which is unlikely to be a full, cer full certificate. They may not have access to full birth certificate, as in older cases, but they were not automatically notified that they were adopted. Because some people, when they're adopted, the real parents don't even want them to know who they are. And I heard that there is something called, um, uh, what do they call it? It's a birth certificate, but uh, birth certificates are sold um, on this website in America. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, um, deed poll certificate in cases where an individual has changed their name by deed poll. That sometimes can cause real complications when you change your name by deed poll. It used to be very straightforward. You just, used, you just used to go to a solicitor. I think you paid at the time about 150, 200 quid and you can get your name changed to anything. Now it causes so much complications when you get your name changed by deed poll. Um, but it's still legal. It's just that it causes hassle when you need um, to prove your identity. So I wouldn't suggest anybody who's not who's a foreign national to change their name by deed poll. It'll give you you'll get hell, or you probably will get hell because you'll have to go through all the reasons why you decided to change your name by deed poll. Then you've got to prove all that you've got to get all of the old documents that had your old name and all the documents that have your new name and. Oh, I don't think it's worth it for a change of name. Do you know that you can change your name just by common usage? So that means that if somebody calls you, so suppose somebody called me Jenny Jones for seven years straight. By common usage, I could actually accept that name as Jenny Jones without any documentation. Don't know how legal it is, but it is apparently so. Um, so if you want to change your name, you can tell your mates to call you something else, but you don't have to do it legally because it creates too much complications. If the birth certificate is not the original, you must also request one of the following. So if you haven't got the birth certificate, the original birth certificate, you're going to have to produce a driving license, a medical card, a national insurance card or a benefit book. None of these are possible if you're a foreign national and you've overstayed because you can't access those documents. So, um, but this is for who? This is for born before January 1983. Okay, so you should have those if you're born January before January 1983. So that's not too much of a problem. I was thinking of uh, more recent so yeah, you should have all of those documents, driving license, medical card, national insurance card or benefit book. These are all if you're seeking citizenship. Um, and you can't do it, like I said, with just your birth certificate. A person who claims to be born outside the UK before the 1st of January 1983 must produce the following. A full birth certificate. Evidence to prove the father was a British citizen when the applicant was born. The father could also have been a British subject or citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies. He could also be eligible under Section 5 of the British Nationality Act 1948 if there is evidence of Crown Service, Government, Her Majesty's or HM forces and so on any current or expired passport. So that's if you're born outside the UK before January 1983. The, those are the documents you're going to need if you want to apply for citizenship. 
Um, a person born outside the UK after the 1st of January 1983 will be required to produce the following. A full birth certificate, any current or expired passports, evidence to substantiate that the father was a British citizen when the applicant was born or the mother. If the parents were not married or the person was born in a Commonwealth country. Evidence of this can be the parent's passport or the Home Office Certificate of Registration or Naturalisation. The passport needs to be recent, but not necessarily the one that the individual arrived in the UK on. Proving right to abode. Section 1. 1 of the Immigration Act 1971 gives complete exemption from UK immigration control to people with the right of abode subject to proof of that right. Under section 3 in brackets 9 of the Immigration Act 1971 as amended by the Immigration Asylum and Nationality Act 2006, a person claiming right of abode in the UK must prove it by presenting either a UK passport describing the person as a British citizen, a UK passport describing the person as a British subject with the right of abode in the UK, or a certificate of entitlement. And that's it. I hope you found that useful for those of you who are seeking citizenship or naturalisation or whatever you need and you believe that because your child was born in the country um, they'd be automatically British citizenship, British citizens. This is just to share with you the um, obstacles or the evidence required, what you'll need in order to prove this is additional evidence required over and above the birth certificate to prove that they are entitled to be a British citizen. And that's all for now. Bye bye.